It is the end of an era for Hostess Brands, the bankrupt maker of Twinkies. So the showdown exploded on November 9th. 5,000 unionized workers went on strike after a bankruptcy judge imposed contract concessions that were opposed by 92% of the union. A few days later, when not enough workers crossed the picket lines to return to work, Hostess began permanently shutting plants. Two days later, Hostess's CEO threatened to liquidate if the strike continued, saying the company did not have the financial resources to survive the dispute. It was all over by Friday. Hostess said it would have to fire more than 18,000 workers and sell assets. Hostess CEO Greg Rayburn is here in the loop along with Harry Wilson. He is the CEO of restructuring firm that is a Mava group who is an advisor to Hostess. We are very glad to have you both with us. Thank Good you very you. much for joining us. So I know, Ray, you have said in the past that you think there could be some interest for a few of the plants and a few of the brands, but you've made it pretty clear that you don't think an entire let's say, relife of this company is possible. That's true. Well, right. you know, again, Hostess marketed itself for sale uh, over the past several years, multiple times. Um, and if you look at some of the quotes that have come out over the weekend in terms of people interested in the business, I think it's very telling because I've, I've seen quotes from potential buyers of the brands saying, now that it, the unions are gone and now that we don't have to pick up antiquated plants, you know, it's a lot more attractive. So, you know, our concern all along was trying to convince our, our, our bakers union that, you know, the, the, to strike in the hopes that somebody's going to come in and pick up those plants and re-employ them on some better terms or even on the same terms was, was, was simply not going to happen. Do you feel like you faced unfair criticism that people have said, okay, you weren't really trying to lead this company in a normal way, that you anticipated bankruptcy all along and honestly didn't give it your best effort? Well, you know, I, I don't know where that would come from. Uh, I got involved in February for the sole purpose, really, of trying to help this company survive and get out of bankruptcy. I'm not, you know, I, the, the, the Bakers Union has l tried to label me as a liquidator. I've known Harry for 20 years. Harry could tell you I'm not a liquidator. I've never done a liquidation. I've done a lot of turnarounds and a lot of successful ones. Sometimes they don't work. But, you know, we, we gave, I think, um, every shot that we could. And I think the lenders tried to do everything they could. The Teamsters did everything they could to give this company a chance to survive. We just couldn't convince the bakers. Okay. So, Harry, I'm mm -hmm. assuming, obviously, you're, you're giving advice here mm -hmm. to Greg. So I'm assuming that your opinion is, is completely in line with that. Was, was it one breakaway union group? that just didn't understand the larger picture. If you had to sum yes, this whole thing up, what is it from your That's exactly right. And I think it's important to underscore a couple of things. One is Greg was not the CEO that led into these problems. Greg came in to try to fix the situation and made a huge positive difference. So that's an important piece of this. It's only been the company for the last few months. Uh, but secondly, you, when you look at how complicated this was, given the historical underinvestment and historical problems of the company, it was really hard to put a deal together. Despite that, all the creditors, the management team, the board, and 11 out of 12 unions either approved the deal or agreed not to oppose the deal. And it was one union with bad information and bad judgment that really led to strike that catalyzed the destruction of this company and 19,000 jobs. So what are you advising then, Harry, as far <laughs> as which brands can be salvaged? Mm -hmm. And let's start with those brands first, and then I'll, I'll ask you to follow up. Well, I think, obviously, the company's going to be in the mode of selling as, as many of the brands as there are buyers for. And I think there will be a number of people of interest in larger brands. Um, there's obviously a lot of brand equity in the company. The question becomes really twofold, you know, proceeds, which are going to be more complicated. Uh, but the good thing is there's a lot of interest, and so that, that should help. And then, unfortunately, on the job side, uh, because you can buy these brands from a, buy a strategic and put into your existing facilities, or as a financial buyer and build new facilities that are much more efficient than the existing facilities, it does, it's a really bad day for the job, on the job front. More likely to go to a private equity firm, some of these brands, or a competitor. Do you have any sense of how this is going to shake out. We have interest, I think, you know, we have, as, as Harry said, we, we will have strategic buyers, uh, industry buyers, um, and, and we will certainly probably have private equity uh, interest as well. I think the, there is there's one misconception in the market is that Grupo Bimbo would be a buyer, and in fact, the bakery leadership actually told their workers that uh, in several plants that Grupo Bimbo was going to come in and buy, and that's really absurd because they just bought Sara Lee. 
Uh, and they're, so their hands are full. Well, there's, well, there's, from an antitrust standpoint, they could never get it cleared, right? I mean, it's just not going to happen. So, you know, uh, but, but, you know, I think that we're going to do the best we can to find homes for the brands. Uh, and as Harry said, though, that's really... How many really, of them? Well, we have about 30 brands. People right. don't really realize how many, you know, Drake's Cakes, Dolly Madison, um, uh, Butternut Bread, Marita Bread. You know, I think, uh, I think we should be able to find buyers for those brands. They're very valuable. If you look at what's happened this weekend, I mean, Twinkie's selling for $5,000 on eBay. I mean, you know, demand hasn't really been our problem, and, and historically wasn't the problem. We, we had revenue of $2.5 billion. That's a lot of Twinkies, Ho-Hos, and Ding Dongs, and Wonder Bread. Uh, the problem was always the cost structure and, and the ability to, to, to make those products and sell them at a profit. All right. Well, we thank you both for the time, even uh, Paul Krugman weighing in today with the Twinkie Manifesto. It's your point about these brands being very ingrained in American culture. Greg Rayburn, thank you very much. Harry Wilson, thanks.